Howdy, it is I, Junk, back again so soon with some more topics to talk to you about and some more gameplay to share. You can see there's been a change in the hangar, but I have one game to show you from before the change and one game from after the change. And uh, I guess before we get into the, the uh, hangar change, let's talk about a different issue, which is my ongoing struggle against uh, <laughs> Pixonic's new types of misery. I've set this back to no one can invite because after being locked out of games for so long, now I'm, I've got a thirsty clan. I've discovered if I set to only clan members can invite, that works. But setting to everyone can invite is the same as no one can invite. And I wonder if maybe they just have set this menu up to not actually function, because if you, like the manual lock-on doesn't seem to work either. So I'm hoping they actually look into it. Of course, the odds of Pixonic actually following up on a report and having a useful bit of insight seems remote. But let's see. We live in faith, as ever we do. So at least now I can get into clan games. If you are not in the clan, uh, shoot, I guess hit me up on the Discord if you want to get into a game. And yeah, I'll have to come up with a better way to do this. And maybe I should just start a Discord. Leave a comment below if you have insight as to, as to, you think just having a Discord is the way to do this? I hate abusing my clan's Discord for this, but. That's topic number one. Topic number two, let's talk about the Ardent Blitz. I've got a clan, I've got a clanny, Algebraic Plume. Shout out to Algebraic Plume, who is thinking about starting a YouTube channel, he absolutely should, who asked me to put the Blitz in the hangar so we could look at the pilot. And I guess while we're here, it doesn't hurt for us to just look at the Blitz pilot for a moment. Your standard Blitz pilot skills, nothing uh, shocking there. And Blitz is one of the robots where you really, really, really want Clive. Like, you don't necessarily want to explore. It's sort of like Bernadette Wolf with the Fenrir. The pilot ability is not only good, but it's what makes the robot viable in the modern meta in ways that it wouldn't otherwise be. So I put it in, and he he had the... Uh, he you know, use the skills, and, and then he came back and said, oh, you know, that, that, that Blitz works really well with Needle, and I was like, what are you, Needle Blitz, you absolute madman, and he said, uh, yeah, he saw, the only person he saw using it was Commando Gaming, so shout out to Commando Gaming, maybe I'll find one of those videos and link it in a card or something if I can find it, but, uh, so this is my copy of Algebraic Plume's copy of Commando Gaming's Ardent Blitz with Needles, and we get to see a little gameplay in it, I don't play a lot of Blitz, I was not here for that meta, and I mean, I play some, I'm not, not new to Blitz, I did have a level Blitz for a reason, but I can, I can see why it's useful, I can see the value of running in, getting through people's shields, I, I don't think I played it optimally, but in my defense, the map for that was Canyon, and if there's a robot, you know, it, if there's a robot that is not likely to survive long on a map like Canyon, it's Blitz where you have a limited time <laughs> where you have a defense system and then you're just hanging out there with your four light weapons. So that's topic number two. Topic number three. There was a Reddit post. Let's go take a look at that post. Okay, so here we are looking at a Reddit post for roasting the Reaver Bolt. The Reaver Bolt, some discussion of it here in a forum thread. Put a link down there so you can check it out. But the Reaver Bolt, as I understand it, I was not playing the game at this particular time, was when Pixonic was launching Dino Squad. There was some type of in game tournament in War Robots where you could win this particular limited edition version of the Bolt. Also, trivia page says it was the first tier one robot with a limited edition skin I have no idea but sure maybe uh, because there could be only one you know in those tournaments at the time there was something like 40 reaver bolts in the game until they started releasing them for cash in the cash shop recently and it's what the name sounds like it's a bolt that has a different skin so Oh, and recently it was a leaderboard prize, but I didn't even try for it because I've bought three in, like, the special offers. And how many Reaver Bolts do you want in a hangar, really? It's a Bolt. It's a Tier 1 robot. You can't put mods on it. It is not easy to use. I have. I mean, I've tried. I've tried in various iterations. Obviously, with the with Otto and Spear, 
you know, you can get some kills with it, but I've gotten kill streaks with Destriers. What does that prove? Um, I like the Gepard too, which is, which is, you know, essentially a similar loadout minus the dash ability. But yeah, roast me for the Reaver Bolt. Okay, top 10 Reaver Bolt insults. Number 10, in a game, it's just like a real dinosaur. You'll never see one alive. Number 9, the dev said there's only a couple dozen of these, which is at least four for every active player of Dino Squad. Number 8, somewhere a giant Happy Meal is missing a deeply disappointing toy. Number 7, Grimlock actually a good size! Grimlock was in the pool! Number 6, this is the first robot to have its edition limited by natural selection. Number 5, only way to make this robot useful is to throw a comet at it, let it sink into the tar, and let heat and pressure turn it into oil for something meta. Number four. Somewhere there's a ghost T-Rex that's like, I thought extinction was bad till I saw what the Russians did to the Velociraptor. Number three. It may look like the last ditch effort of a failing game, but it was actually the first ditch effort of a failed game. Number two. What if I told you there's a way to make both dinosaurs and robots uncool? And the number one Reaver Bolt insult the Ultimate Edition will have a stealth mechanism where, just like Dino Squad, everybody forgets it exists the second it drops. Let's get back in the hangar. Alright, two games to show you. One before the Blitz made it into the lineup, one after. The game before, I believe, is a castle. And that's when I still had the Glory Behemoth in that slot. And then the second one is a canyon where the Ardent Blitz makes its appearance with the needles for the first time. Let's get into it. Okay, we are here now on Castle, and because it's Castle, I have to start with, uh, I guess I call it the new team captain, taking over for the Fenrir, the Laser Behemoth. Really, the Behemoth was always the team captain for me. And we're going to my favorite starting spot up top, looking for some easy kills, and a Weather Chicken decides to be the first on the rotisserie. I am shooting directly into the reflector, do not care. I will do more damage to him than me in most cases. And there's, uh, there's the first kill. Second kill, Behemoth drops in. And Behemoth drops to the floor. Sorry. It's a jungle out here and it's got to be cannibalistic. Jumping Angler was not on my bingo card, but it's what we got. Jumping Angler with Rust Rockets. Uh, discovering that that Easy Picking Blitz had a friend. Easy Picking up Magnetar Blitz. And now, I don't know what I'm shooting at. Maybe a Crisis? I don't know. Something. I'm hoping, really, that the Emuji to his left will take off, because he doesn't know I have Quantum Raider, because they didn't have to use it yet. And he takes off, and the Quantum Raider goes on, and he falls into the, into the watery grave below, I believe. Oh, no, no, I, I, he landed. I, I got him before he hit the water. Okay, cool. And so we have a Calamity Orochi. A lot of interesting builds. We're in the Museum of Robots, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I get a little indecisive here and I pay the price for it because wow does that weather chicken hurt that harpy I don't know what it was on but it it tore me up and that wasn't even my uh, shooting at the reflector that was him so next down the arachnid invader he's got the ultimate orchid on the left and the two limited edition rust rocket claw on the right if there is one robot I don't want to be in facing this invader it's a shell <laughs> A shell that is going to feel all of those rockets that, when they explode, are going to hit all the layers. So you see here, when the angler rushed towards the beacon, I jumped away. Um, that's a good strategic decision with one little asterisk. The good good de uh, decision that I didn't want to be blinded. I wanted to make sure I could put rust on this guy, get the Kestrel to death mark him. can only do that if I can see him. The asterisk here is, it depends a little bit on what your teammates are in, and it depends a lot on how experienced you are at the jump. The invader jump is a little unpredictable. It doesn't feel exactly natural. So if it's your first week running the invader, don't try to jump out of this, because you might jump off a ledge. You might, you know, put yourself in a position where you can't get back easily. If I didn't feel really confident about where the jump was going to land, I would uh, honestly just eat the blindness and work from there. All right, invader now marching towards Beacon C. It looks like they're starting to mech. Actually, they're just being strategic about where to drop in, although one guy is starting to mech. We'll talk about that later. So we've got the fainter Mars fading back, while the Scourge Calamity Fenrir 
jumps in, and I tried to run this exact build. Somebody left a comment about Scourge Calamity Fenrir. I tried to run it, and I did not have a great deal of luck. The problem for me was Nether's switching targets quickly made, made it just too hard to actually get any damage up done. And uh, it doesn't look like our friend here is having better luck than I did in the same build. I think the Hawk got him. Hawk now moving on to the Mars, as we've got the three beacon advantage, but our, our uh, top beacon is now being contested, it looks like. I can't do anything about that from here. I'm going to march towards the Mars with my Orkin and my um, two claws. It's an, this is an interesting fight, and I don't know... Th I think maybe the, the Mars would have a slight advantage here in most cases. I think having the ultimate Orkin certainly changes the equation somewhat. I think I've got some teammate help that is hard to see from here. And uh, apparently, the Mars has some teammate help too. we got the uh, Indra and the Luchador now on the beacon. So, obviously, I can tell my, my time here... Oh, the second Luchador. Well, that's good. I was worried this was going to be too easy. I knew my time there was limited. So, let's see what we have. We have a guy coming towards top, and we have a guy coming towards home. And I can't do anything about the guy on home because I, I don't have a QR in this robot. Can't stop the Loki, but I can go stand on the beacon, maybe. Nope, overshot it. Well... Should I try to walk over? Well, I don't know where the Loki even is right now. And I'm eating a lot of damage for having tried. I, I really misplayed this. I put myself in a position where I'm going to get maximum damage and trade off for very little effectiveness. One sort of meaningless anger kill, and I basically threw a robot away. But where are we? You know, while I was doing that, we had a guy take top in a Skyros. Let's have uh, the Glory show up on their home. Maybe he... Sorry, not on their home, on the top beacon. Maybe he can redeem my uh, poor choices a little bit. Ooh, no, no he can't. Uh, Behemoth, great. Not as great as having, <laughs> you know, a luchador and an aether. Okay, let's take the uh, rust rocket angler out. Dropping it on home. We have a slight uh, beacon bar disadvantage, I'd say. A slight beacon bar advantage. I'm trying to rust up the Indra here for my friend the Fenrir, the headless Fenrir over here. It, it does seem to, you know, with that and my teammates' uh, support, it seems to have convinced the Indra it doesn't want to try to hold center. It's going to fall back a bit. And we've got a hybrid luchador helping him out. And BS guy is one of those top players whose name you see a lot when you're watching high-level Champion League play, so I know that is trouble. At the same time, if I can sort of convince him to turn around, maybe, this could be useful. And it does look like now the Reds are starting to mech. So I run towards their home beacon, but I don't stop there, because I really want to focus on taking out this Indra, and I actually think he's low enough on health that I can do it, and I do. I pay for it. I mean, I didn't do it for free. That, that cost me half of my robot and the luchador took the other half but getting rid of a titan is worthwhile so slight problem three minutes 36 seconds left in the match and i have one robot left that i'm sitting in so this is not exactly what i'd consider a safe situation this is not a good matchup for for the links the uh the hammer links don't try this at home you will not win this most of the time maybe 50 50 but the links manages to tear up our friend and with help from teammates gets the execute. That is the toughest little mender you're ever going to see because that mender <laughs> took out the Aether, essentially. So again, not really the ideal matchup, Lynx versus Kepri, but there's good teammate support. And I managed to get... I'm not sure if I got the execute or the hammer got him, but one of the two. This is getting a little tight. We got a contested beacon, um, two contested beacons. Beacon bar very close. We do have a major player advantage, though, that I intend to keep pressing. Triple kill now for this Lynx, making them pay the price for trying to keep their top beacon. And it looked like the guy just dropped in and ditched. I don't know how that works. Maybe he just quit. And at this point now, it seems like it is all over but the crying, because even though I think they still have a slight beacon bar advantage, 
the player disadvantage has become too overwhelming and BS guy is strong, but he's not he's not a magician. He can't he can't reverse a, a five on one deficit with any amount of of a beacon advantage, even in a luchador. And I'm not even concerned enough to try to preserve my robot, I go in for the execute and take that kill. Hey, you know, when I do it, it's we're all sharing. When they do it, it's kill stealing. When I do it, we're, we're family. What are you complaining about? The BS guy being a pro is not giving up. He's going to make sure we have to fight every step of the way. Mad respect for that. I am in that position enough times that I know it's, it's a sickening and demoralizing feeling to have to do it. But you can't, you can't give up. You can't let anybody get away with it. And the game is over. So, who actually won here on the scoreboard? Well, depends on how you look at it. Uh, I obviously had a great game because I, I, I posted it. I mean, not that I don't post games where I lose, but I did have a great game here. 6.8 million, 13 kills, 9 caps. BS guy, 8.5, 11 kills, 8 caps. Much higher damage there. Now, he had a guy, look at the bottom of the scoreboard there, who dropped after just about a million point uh just out, uh, just after a million damage with no kills and no caps that is really unfortunate had he had the the team support i think he would have gotten the win probably i think this was a case where in all humility to some degree we put the teams on our backs and he just got the heavier team if you switched roles i think uh, you know i would have been on the other side of this equation very easily so shout out to bs guy for Always uh, playing hard all the way through. And yeah, let's go on to the next game. Okay, we are dropping in on Canyon. And I'm going to start with the Behemoth. And then I turn and I see, oh, there's Body Count. Body Count running the same build. So I thought I'll let him have the, uh, the normal sniper spot. And I'll try to do something a little bit different. Of course, then I see Havoc, who uh, I know is going to be <laughs> in the comments here. So sorry about that, man. It is what it is, man. They, they pit brother against brother sometimes. So, I'm not used to playing in quite this position. I'm a little bit more exposed, so that's got me a little bit hesitant and a little bit concerned. Especially when we don't get our secondary. And now I see that uh, body just got blown up up there, so unfortunately, his taking that position just got him targeted faster. So now I'm going to try to support the team and get back the secondary, but I can't jog over there either. And I've got some of my problems, some problems of my own here. There's a Mars hitting me with the turret and hitting me with some direct fire. I think that's a behemoth shooting at me that uh, that Havoc's in, and I'm trying to put some fire back at him. Possibly Prismas or possibly regular versions of the lasers. Let's see, we've got two reds coming to our our secondary I would call it. It's tough to figure out home and secondary on this map, but I think this is technically secondary. If home is the place that's closest to your spawn, this would be secondary. And yeah, while this is going on, I get an angler on top of me and I'm hoping maybe a little team support helping me take this thing out, but uh, there is team support, but it isn't enough to, to help me. I was too far gone. So what now? Only a minute and a half in the game and I'm out of my favorite bot for this map, so let's try the Needle Blitz, the Needle Blitz that uh, my clanny turned me on to. We talked about at the top of the uh, of the video. So I think, all right, this is a good matchup. I've got Needles, he's a Mars, let's run up here. I am getting shot from another direction. Managed to get the Mars, or my teammate does, but now I've got half the number of weapons and I'm taking fire from, from three reds, so. Not an ideal situation. I have, I do have some team support here. Going up against this Nether, and my ability helped me out somewhat there with the uh, damage resistance. But I am half a robot right now, hanging on for for a dear Robo life. So this Feather Destrier actually manages to take out my Typhon teammate, but he gets locked out of the beacon. Steps in to take the beacon, but by that time, of course, we've got more help to chase him away. Back into cover because 
I still don't know exactly what to do. We're down on the beacons. We're down on the beacon bar. And I'm in one half of a robot that isn't that strong when it's whole. So that's not ideal. Managed to uh, dance a little bit with uh, the angler before he phases out and I'm gone. So let's bring in the Invader, another relatively new addition to the hangar, and I've got the Ultimate Orchid on it and two Rust Rockets. Two of the Claw, those are the Sinister Claw, I think. Angler rushing towards us, and we've got a, a Lynx, the Glory Lynx, it looks like, running around. So, dancing here with the Angler on our home, and again, you know, what... What home is and secondary is is very clear on some maps and very mushy on other maps. And this is one of the ones where it's mushier just because if home is measured by what's farthest from the enemy spawn, then this would be home. But if home is measured by what's closest to your spawn, then the, then the other beacon is home. Ultimately, it, it only matters if you have inconsistent nomenclature among your, among your teammates. So if you and your, and your clan agree that one of these is home, just go with that. It's not that important that everybody agrees. For me, I think whatever is closest to your spawn is home, and therefore, even though it's harder for the enemy team to get to the other beacon, I would call that the secondary. I'm trying to take back our home here, and this is getting... It's starting to look a little sketchy. we got the Glory Lynx now dancing with the Orkin Claw Invader on our secondary. And beacons are flipping, but we have a distinct... They've got like three times our bar. And they still have a beacon advantage. So what do we do in this situation? Well, any port in a storm, the next closest beacon to me is center, so I'm gonna go for center and dance with this with this link. But this is actually a good matchup for me. Cause I've got crazy damage reduction on this invader. Crazy health, like I'm at half health, but I'm still at about five hundred thousand health. So he's gonna have to poke at me for a good long time to get to get this uh, invader destroyed. And he doesn't have that long, because he's got to take Rust Rocket and Ultimate Orkin Fire. Ultimately, he manages to get down a net 70,000 of my health. So if only he had a few more of his friends... I do I uh, do fire at this, but I don't manage to get it down. I thought I was doing a, a good job, because with the Orkins, you kind of have to lead your, your uh, opponent. I thought I was doing a good job keeping fire on him. Not as good as my teammate. And at this point, I have no illusions that I could possibly get this guy down on my own. But I also know I don't have to. I knew I had team support. I didn't realize my team support was in the form of Titans. Which makes this drop particularly puzzling, I feel, from uh, from the Reds. That was a, a sacrifice. If You know, I, I knew I had a Titan behind me based on how the Indra dropped. So there was no chance that a regular robot dropping there was going to be able to take me and that Titan out. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm being a little cheeky here. I, I don't think I'm going to live that long in my invader. But I'm just like, I don't need to be in the invader right now. So, the uh, the worm has turned here. Now, they do have the bar advantage, but we've got a major beacon advantage. I decide I'm going to drop in the Lynx. And my thought process for the Lynx versus, versus going with the Titan over here was that if I can just sneak in along the wall and take out whatever is on beacon B, all right, mission accomplished. I don't think the behemoth and the titan can easily shoot at me from here. And it turns out I'm right. <laughs> so I can just stand here, nobody drops in, and the Sirius eventually comes around to realize it actually is serious because now you're five capped. And sorry Havoc, I had to I hate to do you like this buddy, but I, I had to do it. Behemoth now gone and I'm just going to chase down the Sirius because it's a Sirius and I can't take it seriously. I've got a teammate doing the heavy lifting. I'm just trying to stay stay close, provide moral support. And yeah, with the five cap, that bar drains like someone put a hole in the bottom of the bucket. So let's check our scores here. 6.8 million, seven kills, five caps, first place on the team. Havoc, 13 kills. He was doing the work in the behemoth. And I've been in that role before, so you've got nothing but my sympathy, man. I've been in that game where I've put up <laughs> you know, 13, 15 kills in the canyon, and it just amounts to nothing. So I feel your pain. But yeah, thank you, thank you if you've made it to the end of this video. 
If you're a dog or cat at home, I'm sure you're a good puppy or kitty, and your owners are going to bring you a treat when they come home real soon, and I will talk to you later.